Hi guys, and welcome to my April wrap up. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in April. In April, it was also the magical readathon, The Owls, which was like the magical readathon around Harry Potter. And I finished that one. I finished all my books. I am now an astronomer, so with each book that I'm going to show you, I'll also talk about for which subject. I read that book. So yeah. In total, I read seven books. Four of those were physical books and then the other three were audiobooks. I read two classics this month, which is unusual, and I can tell you that one I really loved and the other I didn't like. So <laughs> let's just get into it quickly. So in this wrap-up I'm gonna be talking about the books from lowest rated to highest rated, which I used to do it always in chronological order, so just let me know which you uh, like more. Alright, so the lowest rated book that I read this month was actually A Lord of the Flies by William Golding, the huge popular classic dystopian book that I'm gonna be having a very unpopular opinion about. <laughs> if you don't know what this is about, this is the book about the bunch of boys who strand on the deserted island because of a plane crash and they basically just have to survive there until they are saved by grown-up adults. I think everyone kind of is aware that this is basically just the story of these boys slowly descending into just um, madness and <laughs> having to fight with each other and like going up against each other. That's the story. I was not super enjoying this book. The whole thing with The Lord of the Flies is that it's basically an illustration of the ideas of Thomas Hobbes, I think. I mean, every one of you who's had like some kind of politics, society, philosophy class know that you've heard like a gazillion times about Thomas Hobbes, but he was basically that dude that was like, oh, you know, if you leave people just in their natural state, then they're gonna be at war at each other. And only this overarching, suppressing power of government can keep humanity civilized. That's his idea, and that's kind of the idea that you get represented in The Lord of the Flies. Now that these boys are just out of society, they just start fighting each other, going up against each other, not listening to each other. These boys slowly turn into savages because there's just no rationality outside of civilization. And I just didn't believe it. While I was reading this book, it just felt like William Golding had just been on Twitter too long and I was like, oh, I just lost faith in all of humanity, I'm gonna write a book about it. I think it's very easy to predict whether you're gonna like this book or not because some people seem to absolutely adore it and other people seem to read it and be like, what the heck did I just read? I think if you believe that humanity at its core is bad and selfish, then you're gonna really like this book because this book basically illustrates that. But if you're someone like me who believes that humanity is at its core good, then you're gonna be reading this book and you're just gonna think, what the heck? Why are these things happening? Why are they behaving like this? So I'm not saying this book is inherently bad. I think it did a good job at showcasing how fear can influence your behavior, which I really enjoyed. I'm sounding way too harsh right now. I gave it two stars because I didn't dislike it. I just thought it was meh and I didn't think it was a bad book, but while I was reading it, I was very aware that this was not the kind of story that was going to appeal to me. So I'm really curious to see what you guys thought of this book. Then the, oh, and by the way, I read The Lord of the Flies for Defense Against the Dark Arts, which was to read a book that takes place at coast or at sea. And the next book I read was for the subject of Rhythmacy, which was to read a book outside of your favorite genre. So I picked up a space science fiction book, which I never actually read, and that was Semiosis by Sue Burke. This book intrigued me because I found it on the science fiction top 10 list, and it was supposedly an alien science fiction book where the aliens, for once, are not humanoid animal beings, but actually something completely different. And you very quickly find out that the alien species that the humans who stranded on this planet encounter is actually sentient plants. <laughs> Which sounds really ridiculous when I say it like that, but that's kind of the point that these people go to this planet with very human and earth views and that's causing a lot of problems and they actually find out that the sentient being on this planet is a plant. I think that's cool. <laughs> I ended up giving this book two and a half stars because in the end it did disappoint me. I really expected a very original story, but in the end I still thought, you know, for a book that's praised for being so original, for not having humanoid aliens, this planet was still so similar to Earth. Like there was grass and trees and mammal-like creatures and I was like, why? Why would that happen? I mean, I don't know a lot about evolution, so maybe I'm completely wrong at this, but I just highly doubt that if there is another planet 
with life that the evolution would go in such a way that all life on that earth would end up looking very similar to earth. So that just highly disappointed me. I thought it was going to be more original than it was. I actually have like an entire video coming up in which I react to this book and some other books. So there I'll be giving more of my thoughts. I did really like all the characters. It's a multi-generational story and each generation you have a different narrator and they're all very just flawed, interesting characters. But also I had a hard time connecting to them because we kept switching to different generations. I'm mostly interested to hear if any of you guys who are more well-read in science fiction who have read this book thought of this because it could be that it just didn't connect with me because these kind of space science fiction books don't connect with me. So let me know what you guys thought. Then I read two three-star books, so we're in good territory right now. The first one is the book that I read for History of Magic, which was to read a book with wizards or witches in it. And therefore I read Hans Christian Andersen's Fairy Tales. This book has been sitting on my shelf for like maybe even five years and I finally just decided to go through all of them and finish all of the fairy tales. I gave this three stars because I just have a hard time rating it because they're all such short stories that are also very different but just know that I had a good time. It has some very famous fairy tales like The Princess and the Pea and The Ugly Duckling and of course The Little Mermaid which I really enjoyed reading all these fairy tales in their original form but I think my favorite fairy tales are The Nightingale which is honestly every Everyone should look up that fairy tale. It's so wonderful and it makes me think of this Dutch theme park called the Efteling. It's like a Dutch Disneyland except it's not Disney, it's just grim fairy tales. And then the fairy tale forest, you have all these fairy tales and one of them was the fairy tale of the Nightingale which is what I recognized it from. And I remember that as a kid I was like super scared of that part of the fairy tale forest. Um, but for some reason I grew up to really like that part. It's a rather scary fairy tale for kids because death is a character that appears in it. I think we all have one or multiple of those collection of fairy tales or folklore or myth books on our shelves and I highly recommend just picking it up because it's so satisfactory to just finally know <laughs> what all these original stories are actually about and finally know what the original version is of all the retellings that we know of. So. Good. And then the other three star read that I have this month was The Star Touched Queen by Roshani Chokshi. This one I read for the subject astronomy, which was to read a book mostly during the night, which is what I did with this book. I have an entire reading vlog for this one because this was also the lowest rated book on my entire TBR. So if you want to know my like full in-depth spoiler free thoughts on that book, you can go watch that video. This is a story of Maya. The prophecy says that her marriage will inevitably be tied to death. So obviously no one in this kingdom, which by the way is inspired by Indian culture, I think, no one wants to marry her because they don't want to be tied to death obviously. But her father really wants her to marry someone so she ends up being swooped away by the king of this I, kind of like in between hell and earth world. His name is his name is Amar and they get married and she kind of has to learn how to navigate this country. For the most part this is definitely one of those oh taking you on a journey just mesmerizing ride kind of book where there's not a lot of plot happening, not a lot of characters happening but it doesn't matter because the majority of the book is just descriptions of all these beautiful mesmerizing things that are in this world. And I personally really like those kind of stories but the thing is towards the end suddenly plot starts happening <laughs> and it felt way too rushed. That was the moment that I really started noticing that no indeed the characters and the world building and the villain are not well developed at all which was not necessary for the first part of the story where it was just a mesmerizing ride but then when the plot started kicking in I was kind of like yeah no. <laughs> I think this book would have been better if it was just more self-aware of the type of story that it was and just remained one of those just mesmerizing stories all the way through instead of trying to throw in some kind of adventure plot towards the end because that kind of not ruined but like it made it less enjoyable for me and I ended up giving it three stars so like the first two-thirds of this book were definitely like four stars, maybe even five stars. I have a lot of tabs of just beautiful, beautiful sentences because I love the writing in this. It's very lyrical and poetic. Um, but then towards the end, 
it went a little downhill for me. Also, the romance in this is not for everyone. It's kind of insta-lovey, but on the other hand, some people really like it for just how like overly beautifully romantic it is. And there was definitely a part of me that was like willing to overlook the kind of insta-love to just be like, yes, oh, so beautiful, romantic, I love this. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes you just have that, okay? So this ended up being a three star read. Then a three and a half star read. I just noticed that I didn't give any of the books four stars this month. But anyway, my three and a half star read was a book that was gifted to me by Books Michelle. This is one of her favorite books and that is My Sister Rosa by Justine Labadeste. This is a thriller aka also a genre that I don't usually read but the premise of this is that we follow a young boy named Che and his little sister is basically a psychopath but no one really believes him because his sister is really good at holding this sweet persona among everyone else but he's the only one that knows that she's actually doing really bad things because he's also the only one that she confides in. Just great if you want to read about someone with a very twisted mind. It's just nice and disturbing. You also get a lot of uh, information on Che's life, which is kind of like a coming of age story of him trying to make friends, having his first girlfriend, which was very well written. And I did enjoy it until it started taking over about 70% of the story. And I was kind of like, okay, can we, can we go back to Rosa being weird now? because <laughs> those are all my favorite scenes reading about how Rosa was so good at just finding these loopholes just seeing how Rosa with such cold logic countered all the arguments for why you should be a good person was really interesting because a part of you was like she's technically right but I don't agree with it. And I really like that. And I ended up giving it three and a half stars. I read My Sister Rosa for Herbology, which is a book that starts with an M. And then the last two books that I read this month were both five star reads. So it seemed to be that this month was just like, kind of like around mediocre books and then just five star reads. The first one was The Hunger Games. Um, because of course, I read that one for Care of Magical Creatures because it has a beak on the cover. I have an entire vlog dedicated to all my spoilery reactions to this book, so I highly recommend you just watch that video if you want to go in depth and get a little bit of a recap for what The Hunger Games was about again for the release of the new Hunger Games book, The Battle of Songbirds and Snake, which comes out this uh, 19th of May. I enjoyed this book so much upon my reread. I had never reread it since I read it eight years ago when I was 14 and I was kind of scared that I was not really gonna be into it and that I was gonna be like oh you know now with my adult look I can see that it's not very good but actually there are so many things that I didn't notice when I was 14 that I did notice now and I was like wow it's like a whole new layer of experience <laughs> I can't go into all these things that I noticed because that would be spoilers so I can watch the other video but basically this is just such a good book <laughs> Peak YA. Peak YA. Not just do I really like the characters in this one, I forgot how nicely nuanced these all are. It really has the importance of solidarity as its main theme. And I also just really appreciated how this story really appeals to, I guess, teenage feelings of not knowing how to present yourself to the world, not really knowing what you want to be to everyone else who is watching you. I know this book was written before social media was really a thing and I think this story is even more interesting knowing that social media is an actual thing and the idea of presenting yourself in a certain way towards all the viewers in order to get sponsorships is highly relevant right now. So if you've been debating rereading The Hunger Games before the release of The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, do it. No questions asked. Do it. Instant five star. And the other five star read this month was, um, surprise, surprise, a classic. I don't think I've ever given a classic five stars, but it was The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. <sighs> This is the wonderful story of a young, beautiful man, Dorian Gray, who is widely loved for just his charm and his good looks. And he has this portrait made and very quickly he realizes that the portrait is starting to grow older while he remains young. I thought that this was going to be about the deterioration of his like youth and beauty and how that what that does to him, but it's a little different because it's mostly the deterioration of his youth is like a direct metaphor for just the corruption of his personality. This book at its core is a corruption arc. It's about Dorian Gray just slowly kind of losing himself and starting to do things that he really shouldn't be doing because he's so obsessed 
with appeasing everyone and looking beautiful. He's so obsessed with not being corrupt on the outside that he becomes corrupt on the inside. <gasps> Deep. He has this friend, Lord Henry, who is a really bad influence on him, but also he sometimes says interesting things, which is another thing that I really liked about this book. The characters have a lot of conversations with each other about all sorts of interesting deep subjects and I had a lot of fun reading them because they're very readable but also they're so full of just interesting thoughts which is most of the things that I tabbed are just interesting thoughts. Let me just find maybe one of my favorites. Oh god I have so many tabs. And just the way Oscar Wilde writes. Oh my gosh it's so beautiful just the descriptions. <sighs> I think this quote might be my favorite and also quite nicely sums up I think the general idea and theme of this book. The advantage of emotions is that they lead us astray and the advantage of science is that it's not emotional. Wonderful. If you are having a hard time getting into classics, I highly recommend this one because I think it's easy to get into because it's quite readable. So I think a lot of you would like it. And those were all the books that I read in the month of April. Also, just quickly, if you want to know what I'm going to be reading next month, I'm currently reading um, Conjuring of Light, the third book in the Darker Shade of Magic series. And of course, I'm going to be finishing The Priory of the Orange Tree, which I started in March and I'm halfway through it. And I'm going to finish it this month, hopefully. And of course, I'm going to be reading The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Duh. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in another one. Goodbye. Thank you.